just out of the uh, village pond. You can hear the church bell twanging away there. It's a Sunday. Um, little date check for you. This is videos going out quite a long way from when I film it, I think, because the uh, schedule's completely packed. Um, so this, we are, I think, the 8th or 9th of May today. Um, just the weeds starting to grow up, the reeds are starting to grow up, so I don't know how many more sort of chance I'm going to get to fish the sort of the more wild banks here, because once they get overgrown, then that's them really, and you're not allowed to cut in um, swims or anything, so there are designated fishing platforms. So, um, and they're all sort of nicely planted, so they make fly fishing casting a little bit difficult. Uh, apologies if you're getting wind on the microphone. It is a bit breezy today, and um, for a, for a change, the wind's actually coming from the southwesterly, and it hasn't. I mean, by my reckoning, eight or nine weeks we've had a we've had a, a north easterly, and then it switches to a bit of a northwesterly from time to time, but. We've had nothing from the south properly prevailing, and so um, we made casting from the bank I prefer a lot easier. But we'll see how we get on with that. Um, that's just that's just how it is. And I mean, obviously, as the season progresses, I hope that we can switch back to a prevailing southwesterly because it's been freezing, and that's why we're in May, and there's still the weed growth and, and reed growth is not what it would have been this time last year when we'd had a really really warm March and April. So. Um, yeah, there it is. Anyway, I'm going to get, get out and get tackled up and uh, see if we can get a few out for you. There you go, guys. Little rud there. Absolutely cracking little fish. Lovely little red fin there. You can just see on the uh, that nice little line there. And it just came on that little uh, eBay fly there. And another one there guys, cast straight after there, must have got a little shoal in here, absolutely brilliant fun though, hopefully this ain't bigger in here though. There you go guys, another rud there, as the uh, GoPro battery needed changing, and that one's come on one I've tied myself, and as you can see there, it's like a little buzzer, and it's um, a, a variation on what you what I've been seen termed as the grey boy, and this is a pattern that I learnt from uh, Davy McPhail on YouTube, but yeah, cracking little fish, and then on my own tied fly, I'm very happy with that indeed. And another rud there on the, on the uh, grey boy, just as I... Um, I thought I saw a little rise and I thought oh, I'll cast to it and then there's a little fish scattered and they seem to scatter towards it and he, it was just drifting in the wind before I'd even really started to retrieve just letting the fly sink and uh, yeah the float just nipped and uh, cracking absolutely brilliant fun this is oh Another rud there, guys. Absolutely brilliant fun. It was again on the little, uh, the little red, red sort of grey boy buzzer um, pattern. Absolutely cracking. It just uh, almost as it hit the water, I just saw the line dash off. Brilliant. Oh, this is a slightly better one. Oh, lovely. Cracking roach there, guys. What a beautiful fish. Absolutely brilliant. So happy with that. Absolutely lovely fish. Another little rud there. I'm getting just 
getting a bit better at detecting the bites, I think. Some of them are so imperceptible that um, that, that strike indicator really is absolutely worth its weight in gold. You know, it just, it, it almost just sort of pauses for sort of a fraction of a second. And if you're quick and you haven't got any slack, then you can just get them. And that obviously just came straight off. So it might not have even properly hooked. It might have just sort of wedged in his mouth because it's a size 16 hook and he's only a tiny fish. Well, a tiny little roach there, guys, obviously in need of a feed, and the smallest fish I've ever caught on a fly, and a very optimistic one, because the fly's about as big as his head. And another cracking roach there, guys, or is that a rud? Mm. I'm going to go... I don't know. Um, yeah, that was on the pheasant tail, and it typically just, just bit as the GoPro beeped to tell me it needs a new battery, absolutely typical. But there we go, it's one of those days. I'm out enjoying it, out fishing, and uh, hopefully you're enjoying this as much as I enjoy making it. Well, they're the three flies that have done the business. The two uh, buzzers there at the top, the red and the yellow, and then that little uh, pheasant tail nymph there. They're all size 16. Um, I'm going to go on to something a little bit bigger and fish it a little bit deeper, just as if I can tempt something bigger out. There must be some big... Well, I know there are a few bigger roach and rudd in here, and maybe they're even some bigger than the ones I've had before, so we'll uh, have a go with that. And another little fat one there, guys. That was just on a tiny little um, little crow's, crow's feather nymph that I made. So I think we've had fish on about five or six different patterns now. And as ever, this was just when the GoPro battery needs changing. You couldn't make it up today. It really is one of them days for the GoPro. Well, guys, that wasn't a bad little session. Um, I say little session. I've been here about 10 hours. Um, I've had loads of fish. I don't know how much come out of the GoPro. I've had a, a nightmare with it, to be honest. Every time I got a fish that I wanted to show where I sort of caught on a new or different fly, then the battery just seemed to die as the flipping bite happened um, and I carry a, quite a few spare batteries and a charger so normally keeps me going um, and memory for about eight hours worth of footage so um, yeah it's amazing it's amazing how much I end up with sort of like eight eight hours footage for a 10 minute video but anyway if if none of this come out then you won't even be seeing this outro and this video this day would never have happened in the eyes of the budget angle it'll just been a nice day out for me um, so yeah anyway um, I'm really pleased that I've had some you know, loads more fish on flies I've tied myself. I am probably had about, must have used about six or seven patterns um, and had bites on most of it, well on, on all of them and caught on most of them, just some of the bigger ones I think the um, the hook was probably a little bit too big for the fish to get in their mouth so um, yeah really really pleasing, it's really boosted my confidence with fly tying and it's given me a bit of an idea on, on the sort of patterns that are working on these coarse fish so when I get up on the broads later in the summer um, I'll be able to kind of have a good selection of, of flies that I've got confidence in for rudd and roach which are you know something that's really prevalent on the broads and should be able to target um, there's a lot of bream on the broads as well but obviously as bottom feeders in in quite big rivers that's definitely going to pose more of a challenge but um, obviously you get some real hefty flies for fishing at the bottom of locks and stuff like that you know like Scottish locks um, loch uh, so yeah Anyway, um, just a just a short little video, really, just just me out and about on one of me one of me little uh, Sunday Sunday days out. So hopefully you've enjoyed that as much as you enjoyed making it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers, guys! Fish on.